Welcome to the Asset Management Mastery Podcast. Your hosts, Gary Lipsky and Kyle Mitchell, have more than 50 years of combined experience in operations and management, and more than 25 years of real estate investing experience. This show focuses on educating syndicators and apartment owners on how to build systems and manage their properties more efficiently to become a best-in-class operator. 100% straight talk. Let's jump in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Asset Management Mastery Podcast. I'm your co-host, Kyle Mitchell, also joined by Gary Lipsky. This podcast is focused on educating operators, building better systems, and becoming a best-in-class operator. Also, be sure to check out the Facebook group, Asset Management Mastery. All right. Today on the show, we have Kelly Stinson. How are you doing, Kelly? I am fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, if you can start by telling the listeners a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Thank you. So, My name is Kelly Stinson. I am partnered with an organization called SAS. We are focused on uh, really water efficiencies, water conservation, reducing that 20 to 40% on multifamily properties across the country. And my platform and how I got partnered with SAS is because my personal platform is around water and energy conservation. I had no clue 20 years ago that that was going to be focused around like toilets and shower heads and aerators. (laughs) (laughs) But that is such a huge uh, amount of, you know, a a big focus of where the water consumption is occurring on a daily basis. So that's where I was introduced into SAS. And here we are, you know, I'm saving our world's most precious resource. We're boosting asset values for our owners helping distributions. I mean, what could be better? Exactly. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're looking forward to delving into this um, because you do one of my favorite things is lowering operating costs. So why don't you tell a little bit, uh, uh, excuse me, tell the listeners a little bit about uh, how SES goes about uh, saving money for operators. Yes. So what we do is Uh, When a owner is considering submitting an LOI, or maybe they already have a property um, that's part of their portfolio and they're looking for innovative ways to improve cash flow, um, those owners will reach out to myself or my team. And at that point, we are going to write a very preliminary, a very conservative preliminary proposal based upon the number of units on the property, the vintage of the property. Um, so if the property is built before 1995 and there has not been any major interior upgrades around the showers, the faucets, and the toilets, we should be on your top five list of phone of friends for when you're submitting those LOIs or looking for those, you know, cash flow improvements. So at that point, we'll pencil those numbers. We'll help you walk through those. Um, and If it looks good, then we will proceed forward with what we call a full assessment. It's kind of like a due diligence. We're accessing 100% of the units. We're going to document the fixture rated flow rate of each of those toilets, those shower heads, those aerators. Those pieces are really important, guys, because this way you know exactly what your baseline is that you're working with. Um, And then where are we going to get you to? And then our crews are going to come in and remove all those inefficient fixtures and install all of the new ones. They typically hit like 50 to 60 bathrooms a day. Um, They're able to run at that level of efficiency because of all the due diligence we're running at the very beginning of the project. So, you know, the listeners today are probably wondering, okay, well, that sounds great. Um, I've heard of toilets, right? And really, is that going to save save me money. So what I want to share and make sure that we, you know, get this out to your listeners is the fact that on average, I am reducing that water and sewer expense line anywhere from 20 to 40%. That's on average, the most recent post install analysis that I ran, which was just last Thursday, was a 58% reduction. Wow, that's huge. 
Can I ask a yeah. follow-up question to that? Because we've done that ourselves, right? But we did it in-house. And although we saw great savings, it was nowhere near that amount. And so when I hear that amount, in my mind, it does seem too good to be true a little bit. What's the difference between what SAS does to just me as an operator going in and putting in aerators, low-flow toilets? That's a great question. So part of the, and by the way, that 58% reduction, that's, that's not an everyday type thing. That's, that's, you know, something that we do see often, but that's why I share that average of 20 to 40% reduction. Um, when we go through the full assessment, we are also documenting any of the front of the wall leaks, because what we have found is that on average, 13% of your indoor water consumption is attributed to leaks. Mm. And it's going to be those faucet leaks. It could be the flapper leaks in the toilets. It could be the tub spouts, um, which is, you know, that stem where you turn on the shower head. Um, it's supposed to shut off that tub spout in the bathtub, but there's still like water leaking out. If the average person takes a 10 minute shower a day, and you're still spitting out three and a half gallons a minute out of that tub spout, plus what's coming out of the shower head, that's where you're going to see erosion, right? And then also not all toilets are created equal. So I hear this quite often with, you know, with some of our clients that we've worked with is they'll go and they'll purchase toilets at, you know, another box store, not, not thinking about, you know, sometimes the technology that, is or is not involved in that toilet. And so you might be putting in a water sense certified product or toilet, but essentially there might be a lot of clogging. And so you have to double flush. And at that point, you're not going to see the savings. So it's really important to do your homework um, to understand what type of products you're installing. Yeah, this is, this is a no brainer. Kyle and I, on all the properties that we look at, we see, you know, do they have, that uh, low flow and, and uh, you know, so we could take advantage of that. You know, if you're saving $20,000, which isn't a, a, a huge savings on a five cap, that's $400,000 of value to your property. So any, you know, newbies out there that are listening, I mean, this, this is like found money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I was thinking about this the other day because, you know, we have a lot of clients out there that are taking bridge loans when they're purchasing properties right now, because it's a little bit easier to work with on, you know, the CapEx. So you work this in on your bridge loan with the CapEx. So then in two years, you, two or three years, you're going to refinance the property. Well, because you're going to be able to benefit from that reduction on that water sewer expense line within that first year, then that's boosted the asset value. Immediately, you're going to see that return on that refinance. And then what you could do at that next stage for further down the hold is to apply a, you know, a resident allocation for a portion of that water and sewer. And so, um, you know, if I'm a passive investor, why should it matter if the GP is, is doing water conservation? Good question. So, I will share with you that the majority of our clients we work with are not doing water conservation because it's a feel good. <laughs> so they're doing it strictly because that conservation is yielding green cash for them. Um, this is why it's important. Last year alone, when everybody was on shelter in place, we found that the water consumption on the majority of the high occupancy properties actually increased three to five times, okay? If that's an all bills paid property, okay? Or even if you're billing a, a percentage of it back and then your residents are not paying rent and then you're stuck with the eviction moratorium, you have all sorts of erosion that's occurring with NOI. And I'm sure you guys have, have heard some of the you know, horrific stories out there of distributions that have been paused because the, the financials on the property are, are distressed. This is a fantastic component to know that the owners, the sponsors are evaluating every single opportunity 
for innovative solutions to effectively run the property. You can't run a multifamily property today. You know, it, it's not the same as it was five or seven years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, now you really have to become very, very specific about the underwriting um, and what is that business plan. And if for some reason that plan doesn't work, what's your plan B and what's your plan C? And the water efficiencies and the water conservation, because those water and sewer rates are rising, you know, at a, at a faster pace than, you know, inflation, which is scary to think about, especially right now. Um, this is a, this is a, a very sensitive spot. So as a passive, and I, I'm a passive myself. So as a passive, that's, that's part of my criteria. We have to evaluate water efficiencies on the property to make sure that, you know, even if it doesn't fit in the business plan at the time to upgrade the fixtures, if they need to be done, we got to shore up the leaks. That is key. I mean, you're just flushing money down the toilet, literally. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I've heard some pushback from people about the low flow toilets, you know, that like you mentioned, it takes two flushes or this or that, maybe as, you know, uh, educate our listeners about that. Yes. So think about it with the, the, with the majority of the toilets that are out there today, you open up, you, I call it flipping the lid. You, you flip the lid on the tank and you see the typical fluid master fill valve. And then you see the flapper with the rubber chain. There isn't anything else different about the toilet other than might be a little bit more, you know, modern design. And then it's just using less water. So you're asking this toilet to push the same amount of waste with less water, but but there isn't anything different about the technology of the toilet. And that is what is becoming so common in these chat groups online is with the sewer lines backing up and stuff because it just can't carry the waste that far. So I partner specifically and exclusively with Niagara because they actually re-engineered the toilet. So their toilets operate at 0.8 gallons per flush, which is even more efficient than the majority of the 128s that are water scent certified. But what I really like about what they've done with the toilet is they've created um, a, a solution that has no flapper. So you don't have to worry about the leaks. And then in addition, in between the flush, there's an air pocket that's created on, in the trapway. So when you release the flesh, it's releasing that pressure and it's siphoning the waste out and then it's pushing the waste further down the sewer line than any other low flow toilet on the market today. So that's why I share the Niagara, the Niagara Stealth Toilet is by far one of the superior products out there. Um, it is expensive. Um, I, I will share that, but the cost of having your line jetted or, you know, have to excavate, you know, any of your sewer lines, <laughs> the cost for the Niagara toilet is, is much less expensive than the alternate solution. What are you seeing as an uh, average cost for that toilet? So if you were to walk into like a retail store, you're probably going to see that like around 150, 160, right? Um, you know, if you're running turnkey with our organization, because we do all of the financial analysis, we run all the material, all of the labor, that's probably going to run you about 285 a bathroom. So, um, and, and to be able to have somebody come in and install it, you know, 50 to 60 bathrooms a day is key because we've had some clients that have tried to take it in house. And then they are three months later and their staff is only installed maybe 10 or 12 units. So then they come back and they're like, Hey, can you finish this up for us? We we need to start getting some savings. Mm -hmm. And for apartment owners, you know, do you cover the whole U S or is there a range of areas, territories that you cover? We are nationwide. Um, And so we will operate in, you know, all of the States now, um, There are certain areas that are going to be a little more expensive to install in because permits are going to be required. 
we see that quite often in the Northeast, um, especially, you know, like in Chicago, we're starting to see permits required in some tertiary markets, like in Arkansas, which is unusual. Um, but that is one piece that's really important because the last thing you want is to have a city inspector come out red tag. Um, we do everything we can to explain to the city that we're doing a like for like, a one for one replacement. Often we're able to have an exception written by the city that will allow us to go in without permits, but in those, you know, in those particular areas where we can't, that's that's where that additional cost will come in. And anything else I you know a, 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 a GP or an operator should know about you know doing doing um, water conservation. So know the numbers, right? Um, I see this constantly on um, OMs out there where the brokers are advertising you know, water conservation as an upgrade to reduce expenses. And if they're not using my numbers, I'm always going in and testing the numbers that are in there. My advice, test those numbers because I have seen it time and time again, especially in these OMs where those are just national averages that are thrown out there. And if and if you don't understand how we're getting to, you know, hey, we're running the numbers that, you know, maybe, you know, each person is flushing the toilet three times a day. We're running 10 minute showers at 240 days a year. That could completely throw off um, where, you know, where your projections are. And you definitely don't want to be in that place. So that's why I asked, always, always call us, always reach out. Um, we want to be that resource. I mean, even this is our way of giving back in the community, even if it's not the right fit for you to run a turnkey or, you know, to partner with us at the time, we want to make sure that you are placing the right product and that you also understand why you're placing it. Excellent advice. Kyle, take it away. All right, Kelly, what is your asset management superpower? <laughs> Well, I think we covered that, <laughs> right? So my asset management superpower is, you know, everything, you know, potties and water. So with my nickname, the potty princess, um, that that's it. I mean, I always, I always call, you know, or I shouldn't say always, but I've referred to myself lately as the toilet whisperer, because I am getting so many text messages and DMs with pictures of toilets and running faucets and they're like hey what do you think this is do you think there's money in here it's like when you're running a property tour do that I love that send me a dm send me a message say hey do you think there's an opportunity and that's all I need is a picture of, of the toilet I can look at it and be like oh yeah that's that was a 1972 that's a five gallon per flush toilet that's just one of those really random superpowers Awesome. Awesome. Love that. Uh, can you tell the listeners where they can find out more about you? Yes, you can reach out to us through our website, which is sasconserved.com. There's a contact us button comes directly into my email, or you can find me out on Facebook or LinkedIn. You can just put in hashtag the potty princess, and that will get you right to me. And, you know, I try to push out, you know, relevant contact, uh, content on a, on a consistent basis, because this is such a hot topic for everybody. Perfect. Well, we appreciate you being on to all of our listeners out there. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please write a review to help us continue to grow the podcast. And we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please go to iTunes and leave a rating and written review to help us grow and reach more listeners. You can also go to the Asset Management Mastery Group on Facebook so you can reach Kyle and Gary and ask your questions that you want them to answer on the show. Subscribe too so you can get the latest episodes. Lastly, to stay updated, go to AssetManagementMastery.com and sign up for the newsletter. If you're interested in partnering with Gary and Kyle, sign up on the contact page so you can talk to them directly. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in again next week for another episode.